Hi, boys and girls. I hope you're doing well. It is um, 3 o'clock for me right now, and it's sunny out, and so I was sitting outside for a little while with Alexia and Sierra, and it's pretty out, so I hope you got to go outside a little bit. But you're probably reading, listening to this later on, so hopefully you're having a nice day too. Um, this is the second book in our series of uh, Gail Gibbons' author study. Today is Giant Pandas. So I was looking through this book and it just reminded me so much of you, Ollie and Colton and Sawyer. I can't remember who else was really into pandas, but there might have been a couple more. But you guys bring in your pandas in. I wish I was reading this in class so you could be holding them. Um, but it's a cute book. This is called Giant Pandas by Gail Gibbons. And she had a message for us. And the message says, Animals survive and protect themselves and their young in different ways. Some books give inter interesting information about animals and how to protect them. So we'll see what Giant Pandas is about. Misty thick clouds hang over the mountaintops. A large black and white animal makes its way through a bamboo forest it is a giant panda. Giant pandas live in the mountains of China. The Chinese people call the giant panda Da Xiong Mei, meaning big bear cat. It looks like a bear and has long claws like a cat. Giant pandas are members of the bear family. Giant panda characteristics. Adult giant pandas are about four to five feet long and normally weigh about 200 pounds. Most of the time they move slowly, but if they want to, they can move as fast as a trot. Their bodies are very flexible. The fur of a giant panda is thick, coarse, and oily to keep the panda's body warm and dry. The fur is about two inches long. So when you're looking at this picture, I really want you to look at the diagram. Great diagram, labels, something that you can think about again when you're doing your science. The more labels you can include, the more information we can get from your pictures. Giant pandas have poor eyesight, but they have excellent sense of smell and hearing. In fact, pandas are hard to find in the wild because they can hide when they smell or hear people coming. <clears throat> Normally, giant pandas are shy and tend to stay by themselves. When they want to communicate with one another, they use about 11 different kinds of sounds. They bark, growl, squeal, and make other sounds to mean different things. Giant pandas also communicate by leaving their scent to tell other pandas they are in the area. They do this by rubbing a smelly liquid from their glands under their tails onto rocks and trees. Thousands of years ago, giant pandas ate only meat, but over time their diet changed to mostly plants, mainly bamboo. Occasionally they eat grass, roots, vines, honey, or even meat. Bamboo, because bamboo is not very nutritious, giant pandas must spend between 10 and 16 hours a day eating in order to stay strong and healthy. The average panda eats about 27 pounds of bamboo in a single day. That's a lot of bamboo. Giant pandas have five claws on each of their paws, and they also have a special thumb on their front paws. They use their thumbs and claws to grasp the bamboo. So here's a little sidebar right here. They're showing it, the picture with the label. Giant pandas use their big teeth and powerful jaws to crush and eat bamboo stalks. They also eat leaves. 
Giant pandas can be playful and athletic. They do somersaults and climb trees quite easily. Also, giant pandas can swim, holding their heads above water while they paddle with their legs. Another little sidebar with the labels. Giant pandas don't have a regular sleeping place. They sleep on the ground, in the base of a hollow tree, or wherever and whenever they feel tired. They sleep two to four hours at a time. Male and female giant pandas come together to mate in the spring. After mating, the male goes off on his own. The female makes a bed of bamboo, twigs, and grasses in a cave or among rocks, or in a hollow tree. This place is called a den. Here's the den right here. I love her pictures. Remember that she does her pictures herself. In the autumn, about five months later, the mother panda gives birth to one or two babies called cubs. Immediately after giving birth, she begins nursing one of the cubs. A mother will raise only one cub at a time. Only one will survive. In their natural habitat, mothers usually give birth every one to three years. A cub is very small. It only weighs about three ounces and is about six inches long. The mother is about 900 times larger than her cub. It's amazing how gentle she can be. The cub has pink skin all over and some fuzzy white fur. Its cry sounds like a human baby. The mother holds her cub almost all the time. She won't leave to get food for herself for about one week after she gives birth. In about 40 days, the cub opens its eyes. It has its black and white markings and is still helpless. When the mother wants to move her cub, she gently picks it up by its neck and carries it from place to place. It's kind of like a kitten and a puppies, huh? Look how little it still is. So cute. At about four months old, the cub is able to crawl. At seven months old, the cub can run and climb trees. It weighs about 20 pounds and has learned how to eat bamboo. At about two years old, the young giant panda weighs around 120 pounds and has learned all it can from its mother. Now it is time for the young panda to live on its own. In another two years, it will be able to have its own young. Over the years, the number of giant pandas have become smaller because of the destruction of their natural habitat by people, accidental deaths and traps set for other animals, and the hunting of pandas for their fur. Because of their size, giant, adult giant pandas have few natural enemies except for people. Around 1900, there were about 65,000 giant pandas living in the wild. Today, there are fewer than 2,000. The people of China are trying to protect them. They have set aside large areas called reserves where giant pandas can live safely. Also, it is a crime to harm or kill a giant panda. In China and in a small number of other countries, scientists are trying to help increase the population of giant pandas. These pandas are cared for in captivity. The scientists try to encourage the pandas to give birth and care for their cubs. When the young giant pandas are capable of living on their own, some of them are released back into the wild, nature reserves in China. Others are placed in zoos. Whenever there are giant pandas in the zoo, people love to come and see them. 
They look like big, chubby, black and white teddy bears that are very playful. It is so much fun watching them. Giant pandas are one of the rarest and most appealing animals in the world. That's the end. Look at the back there. That's the mom taking care of her cub. So I'll read the message again from Gail Gibbons. It says, animals survive and protect themselves and their young in different ways. Some books give interesting information about animals and how to protect them. So that was a great story, or actually great nonfiction book that we got to read today. Uh, don't forget that there's a re reading response that goes along with this. Uh, there was one done for you, and that was the one on the penguins to kind of give you an example. So today will be your first time writing down the noticings that you noticed in the story today. Thank you. Have a good day, you guys. Miss you. Bye.